Hey guys, Joe back once again with some OCR FSMQ uh, uh, lessons and today we are back with linear programming, the first part of three uh, for linear programming. I, I did three lessons with my class on this one and it is a tricky topic, uh, probably the hardest uh, one on the course and the hardest one to get your head around because it is very wordy and um, yeah, there's a lot of information to, to sort through but we'll, we'll try our best during this lesson to, to you know, uh, decipher it. So the learning objective is to understand regions and their uses in linear programming. So let's talk about regions to start with. Let's uh, identify the region um, identified by the following inequalities. So we've got 2y is greater than x, x is less than 8, y is less than 6, and y plus 2x uh, is greater than 12. So first we have well, first, let's think about 2y is greater than x. So, treat it as an equation. Uh, 2y equals x. So, just forget the inequality for now. Rearrange, if necessary. We want y on its own, so we can plot it. So, we'll call that y equals a half of x. And then we'll plot the line. So, a gradient of a half and going through the origin. Uh, like that. And we'll go back to our inequality now. And we ask ourselves... What does that want us to do? It wants to be greater than, so that's really saying it wants to be above the line. So what do we do? We shade the opposite, so we'll shade this lower part here. So there you go, we want to be above the line, so we shade the opposite, like that. So hopefully you can see that on the screen, we shade this area here, under the line. Then we'll think about... The next, uh, the next inequality, x is less than 8. So remember, treat it as an equation. Forget the inequality, so it's x equals 8. And that is just a line that goes straight up through 8. Like that. And when then we ask ourselves, uh, do we want to be above or below the line? Really, this inequality, when it's a straight line like that, it's just telling you it wants to be to the left, so we shade to the right like that. There we go, read the, equi uh, the original equation. We want less than 8. So we shade the other side, like that. And then we'll move on to our next inequality. y is less than 6. So we'll treat it as an equation. Uh, we'll forget the inequality and call it y equals 6. That's just a line that goes through uh, y equals 6, like that. And then we'll ask ourselves, do we want to be above or below? That's telling me I want to be less than 6, so that means under. So I shade over in this region here. We want less than 6, so we shade the opposite, like that. And here's uh, the final bit here. Now, um, we can treat that as an equation, so y plus 2x equals 12. Now, there's two ways to do this. Um, my personal favourite is to cover up uh, something like that. So I cover up the 2x, so I know that y equals 12, so I'll put across there. And then, similarly, I'll cover up the y and call that 2x equals 12, and I know x will equal a 6, so I can put across there, and then plot my line accordingly. But this one uh, uh, has been animated, so that y equals 12 minus 2x, but that, that the cover-up method is another way of doing it, and you'll get the same answer. But that is uh, a line with the, the y-intercept of 12, which is the same as what I got, and a gradient of minus 2, so for every one along it goes 2 down, and eventually it will end up to where I wanted it to be. So that's just a quick method in an exam if you want to do that. So, uh, back to today's topic then. Read the original inequality. So we want to be above the line. So we shade below the line, like that. And that is regions for you. So uh, make sure um, you sort of get your head around that. What the, the inequalities are telling you and how to plot that on a graph because that is one of the main things with linear programming and how you get your answers. So the four answers in this one would label the region R and we'll call this the critical region so that's a, a key word to remember and the four points would be that. So we have a point here, point here, a point here and a point here. And we may be asked to maximize, minimize uh, profit to do with these so uh, to do with an objective function but we'll talk about that in a bit. So here's a here's a classic linear program question. Uh, formulate a set of inequalities to solve the problem below. 
Very wordy. A manufacturer makes two types of chairs, A and B, each of which is processed in two departments, 1 and 2. Chair A is processed in department 1 for 3 hours, and then in department 2 for 2 hours. Chair B has to be processed in department 1 for 3 hours, and then department 2 for 4 hours. So, let's get our head around that. So, Chair A, oh, this is another part of the question. Chair A sells for £10, and Chair B sells for £12. So, this is more of the question. I think this whole slide is actually the question. The time available in Department 1 in any month is 120 hours, and the time available in Department 2 is 150. Assuming all the chairs uh, manufactured are sold, which is very unrealistic, uh, how many of each type of chair should be manufactured so that the profit is maximised. Now let's remember that for later. So you might want to make a few notes or uh, screen capture that or keep that on a separate monitor, you know, if, you, if you're uh, that good, just so that you can see the question while this is happening. But we're now going to formulate with inequalities. So let X be the number of chair A that are made and let Y be the number of chair B that are made. So if X x uh, amount of chair A's are made, uh, then the time spent in department 1 will be 3x, because if you remember back at the question, it said that it would uh, spend three, 3 hours in department 1, so that means uh, that you can call uh, chair A's in department 1 3x, because x is spending 3 hours in department 1. And it was the same for chair, chair B, if, if we let y uh, equal the number of chair B's that are made. Uh, it also said that there was three hours uh, spent in department two, uh, department one. So if we'll have a look back here, uh, department one for three hours, department one for three hours. So I wasn't lying to you. There we go. Uh, if X chairs are made, then the time spent uh, in department two will be two X because it was uh, two hours that spends in department 2 and similarly for y it was 4 hours if we go back a slide now uh, we'll see that so it'll be 2 hours in department 2 and 4 hours in department 2 for, for b like that the time available in department 1 is 120 that was uh, told to us in the second part of the question so we know that 3x plus 3y must be less than or equal 120 because you can't go above the 120, otherwise the workers will, you know, not be happy that they're uh, working overtime, and they'll strike against you, and you won't get any chairs made. But try, uh, try and think of that. So there's 120 hours available in the department. So the amount of hours spent in there by uh, chair A and chair B must be less than this overall 120 hours. Uh, probably the hardest thing to, to conceptual conceptualize. Uh, with linear programming. So similarly, with department 2, uh, there's 150 hours available in that department. They must have uh, a few more workers. So it'll be 2x add the 4y must be less than or equal to the 150 because you cannot go over that 150 because there's only 150 hours available. So try and keep all these plates spinning, as my teacher used to say. Just keep them all going and uh, keep them all all off nice and um, allowed <laughs> I guess you, you don't want to break the rules right so we obviously can't make a, num a negative number of chairs so X is always greater than uh, equal to zero and Y is always greater than or equal to zero as well so we always work in the positive quadrant of a, of a, of a graph so if you think of a graph we always work in this quadrant here we never work in negative time and negative amounts of, of, of chairs and things like that so uh, if we sell all the chairs we make, we have made um, a profit of 10x plus 12y because uh, each chair sells for £10 uh, and, and £12. Uh, um, uh, if you go back to the, the, the question before, if we do, um, well, we can't do that. But never mind, um, you get the idea. Uh, just, just in an exam, you'd have all of this above here. Uh, so you'd be able to cross-reference, but unfortunately there's not enough space on a PowerPoint slide to do that. But here's what graph. This is the tricky bit. Now, uh, the time available 
in department 1 is 120, so 3x plus 3y, it must be less than 120. We talked about that before. So, cover-up method, if I cover up my 3y, then I know 3x must equal 120, so x must equal 40. So, we'll put a cross there. And if I cover up me 3x, then I know 3y is uh, 120, and y must equal 40 as well. And we want to be under the line, so we shade above. So, we'll plot that line there like that want to be under so we shade over and a little bit of a recommendation for you always label your lines uh, just so you don't get so so you don't get confused later on when you when you're referencing them uh, but we want to be under the line so we shade over the line like that and um, <coughs> that's that inequality done, pardon me. Uh, the time available in department 2 is 150, so 2x plus 4y must be less than or equal to 150. So if I cover up that, uh, 2x uh, to cover up the 4y, uh, 2x will equal 150, so x must be 75. So I'll put a, an x about there. And if I cover up the x part, 4y will equal 150. So y equals about 37 and a half. So it's going to be up here somewhere like that. So plot your line. There you go. Goes exactly through where I thought. And we want to be under the line so we shade over the line. But disappointingly, it's only that little bit there. And remember to label your lines because that is a big, big part of linear programming. Uh, and our answer, they, they were the only two inequalities we've given, uh, which is unusual for linear programming but uh, our answer lies somewhere in the white zone and we call that the feasible region or as I alluded to it before the critical region and we call that R and I think that's going to pop up there so there are your three points that we are interested about if you remember ages and ages ago when I read out the question we wanted to maximize the amount of profit but there we go what about the profit uh, P equals uh, 10x plus 12y, if you remember, but you would have all this in front of you, so don't worry if, you, if you're if you struggling to remember all of the equations and things. There is a lot to sort of think about with linear programming, and that's why it's hard. Uh, there, there were three points, by the way. Uh, if we sell all the shares we make, uh, we will have a profit of 10x plus 12y, because each chair A sells for £10, and each chair B sells for £12. So... Think about it like this. Uh, think of a number that is a common multiple of 12 and 10. Now, you're probably thinking 120, but if I do that, my line's going to be a little bit small. So, probably think a little bit bigger and with reference to your scale. So, you have a bit of creative freedom with this. But I'm thinking 240. So, I'll uh, plot the line 10x plus 12y equals 240. And this is called the objective function. Now, this is... Um, a big big thing with linear programming and a big thing to remember there's two ways of working out maximum in profit but this is possibly the best way um, there we go there's what objective function I've just covered that uh, used the cover method so uh, if I cover up the Y I will get 10 X equals 240 so X must equal 24 which is there and if I cover up the X then I will get 12 Y equals 240 so Y must equal 20 like that and then I draw the line in and now I want to get as far out of the white zone as possible when I'm maximizing I want to get as far out of the white zone as possible so uh, label the line and you want to go as far out as possible until you're just on the verge of going into the orange zone that is the maximum point we're gonna have to stop there because any more sliding uh, you must remain completely parallel, by the way. Uh, any more sliding, and we will have left the white zone completely, and will not be keeping work constraints happy uh, with inequalities. So, that's not the answer. So, the answer to the problem uh, is the value of x and y, which stays in the correct zone, or the feasible region, or the critical region, and maximizes profit must be where the two lines meet. 
So this is the other way you can work it out. It's not a good idea to get this point by looking at the graph because you might you might have just drawn it a little bit odd and it'll be a little bit inaccurate. So get the answer by looking at simultaneous equations. So this is where labeling your lines comes in good. Uh, so I know it's where the this line and this line meet. Um, so I'll set them up in a simultaneous fashion. And I always like to um, match the middles. Uh, and that's what I've done here. So I've times the, four, the top one by four. So times four. And times the bottom one by three. To get that. Now I've got the match middles. I can take them away from each other. And I'm going to get 6x equals 30. So x must have equaled 5. And then I can put that x back through any of the equations I want to get the y value. So the y value is 35. So don't forget the profit though, because that's what we were in it uh, to do. So we've come to the conclusion you should make 5 chair A's and 35 chair B's. Remember though, a profit equals 10x plus 12y. So 10 times 5 plus 12 times 35 equals 470 quid. So I advise the manufacturer to make 5 type A chairs and 35 type B chairs to make a profit of that, which is 470 quid. And that, folks, is about that. So I hope you guys have found that helpful. Uh, there will be two more parts on simultaneous equations and um, uh, not simultaneous, <laughs> on linear programming. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully... Uh, be able to, to get this into your head. Uh, this is a difficult concept, uh, but hopefully I've been able to explain it uh, reasonably to you, and you'll be able to get it a little bit more. But the key with these is practice, 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 like with all maths, and you'll be fine. It's uh, You can find it on Decision 1, A-level mathematics, uh, if you're struggling to find um, examples. And the FSMQ website has past papers on there that you can check out, and there's a few good um, past paper questions on there. In a couple of lessons time we'll be talking about something called in integer solutions. Um, so no hate down in the comments section asking where they are. They're coming in a later episode. Today is just about the basics of linear programming. Trying to pick apart the question, drawing your graph, identifying regions and talking about the objective function. So I would recommend possibly watching it again, making notes, uh, trying to go along yourself with the, the video and see if you get the answers right but it is a difficult concept and i am more than happy to answer questions down below in the comments please leave a like if you found it helpful leave a dislike and a reason why if you didn't um and yeah i'll see you guys for another lesson in linear programming in a couple of days time hope you guys have a great day i'll see you later